The subject of this brief presentation on structural engineering is analysis and design for stability. I'm Alan Adams, Chief Structural Engineer and Senior Product Manager at Bentley Systems. Beginning in 2005, the AISC 360 specification for design of steel buildings explicitly listed a requirement that the effects of stability-related conditions be considered. Prior to that specification, these were considered, not necessarily explicitly, but often through the use of design equations that had limits on capacities that were conservative. AISC 360 now requires that they be explicitly addressed. There is often a great deal of uncertainty about this requirement, and it is easy to neglect including important effects that should be considered in obtaining proper designs. They include A, flexural, shear, and axial deformations of members, components, and connections. These effects are considered in the analyses that have typically been done. B, second order effects. Large P delta is the effect of vertical loads acting on the laterally displaced structure. In the initial state, the structure is subjected to horizontal and vertical loads. As the structure displaces horizontally, the vertical load acting on the displaced structure produces an additional moment in the structure. This moment results in additional displacement, which results in additional moment, and so forth, until the structure reaches equilibrium. In this simple example, the design moment is not merely V times H, but rather V times H plus P times delta total. If the structure is not stable, rather than converging on the final position, it will collapse. This condition is critical and is not detected by a traditional first order analysis. A second order analysis of some type must be performed. Small p delta is the effect of axial load on the deflected member. In the initial state, the structure is subjected to an axial load. As the member deflects, the axial load acting on the deflected member produces a moment in the member. This moment results in additional deflection, which results in additional moment, and so forth, until the member reaches equilibrium. In a simple example, the design force is not merely the axial load P, but includes a P delta moment. If the member is not stable, rather than converging on the final position, it will collapse. Again, this condition is critical and is not detected by traditional first order analysis. C. Geometric imperfections. The code of standard practice provides tolerances for the erection of the structure. These can result in a structure that is out of plumb. The vertical loads acting on this out of plumb structure induce additional design forces into the structure. The material standards allow tolerances in the production of the members, resulting in member out of straightness. The axial load acting on this curved member induce additional design forces into the member. D. Stiffness reduction due to inelasticity, most notably that due to residual stresses. Residual stresses are a result of the manufacturing process for structural steel. Residual stresses result from the uneven cooling of the steel member. E. Uncertainty in system, member, and connection strength and stiffness. I assume these to be the effects covered by phi and omega, the resistance factors and safety factors. The specification states that any rational methods can be used to consider these. But what methods are available and how are they to be done? There are many ways of satisfying these requirements. Here are examples of the more common approaches. Large P delta can be considered either through a second order analysis or application of moment magnifiers such as the B2 factor. Small P delta can be considered either through a second order analysis or application of moment magnifiers such as the B1 factor. The geometric imperfection of out of plumbness can be considered either by directly modeling the out of plumb structure or by application of notional loads. The disadvantage of direct modeling is that you have to create four separate models, one for each direction of out of plumbness. A more practical approach is through the application of notional loads, which are a fraction of the gravity loads applied laterally. In effect, the gravity loads are applied with both a vertical and horizontal component. The geometric imperfection of out of straightness as well as residual stresses, can be considered either through the use of effective lengths, KL, when determining the axial capacities, or by using reduced member stiffnesses in the analysis. Additionally, some code equations give reduced member capacities to, in part, account for this. In Appendix 7.2 of AISC 360, the specification gives a method, called the effective length method, that can be used to satisfy the stability requirements. It involves several steps, most notably the use of the effective length factor K. There are limits to the use of this method, but I generally recommend that this method be used for braced frame structures since K equals 1. 
Alternately, section C1.1 gives the direct analysis method. The direct analysis method is not a single analysis, but rather a methodology, a series of required steps. Most notably, in this method, the structure is analyzed using reduced member stiffnesses. When this method is used, actual lengths rather than effective lengths are used. That is, k equals 1. I generally recommend that this method be used for moment frame structures. These requirements can be satisfied quickly and comprehensively using Bentley's RAM structural system. Let me demonstrate how that is done. After the model is completed, the analysis and design of the lateral frames can be performed. In the RAM structural system, even complicated buildings can be modeled quickly and accurately. Select the option to perform a large P-delta analysis. Select the option to use the AISC 360 reduced stiffnesses. Along with the wind and seismic cases, create the notional load cases. Notional loads for dead, live, and roof loads will automatically be created in both orthogonal directions based on the gravity loads included in the model. Perform the analysis of the structure for each of the load cases. Proceed to the still standard provisions module. Select the desired code. And then select the desired set of load combinations. Input the necessary parameters. And generate the load combinations. These will all be used in the member design. To account for small p delta effects, select the option to apply the AISC B1 factors. The B2 factors are not necessary here because the analysis included the large p delta analysis. Perform the code check. The design status of each member is graphically represented. Individual members can be investigated, detailed reports can be obtained, and alternative sizes can be investigated here. A powerful and useful report is the AISC 360 Direct Analysis Validation Report. It will verify the correctness of each required step. Any omissions will be clearly identified. The status of the second order analysis, the inclusion of notional loads, and the use of reduced stiffnesses is reported. The RAM structural system provides a comprehensive and robust set of options for satisfying the design and analysis requirements of AISC 360. The direct analysis validation report identifies when the proper set of options have been selected and warns when the necessary options are ignored or improperly applied. AISC 360 has become more demanding and complicated in its requirements for stability analysis. The RAM structural system provides powerful and comprehensive tools that allow you to work efficiently and productively, producing structures that are safe and economical. For more information, contact us at www.bentley.com.